Welcome to Make the Grade with the success doctor, Stephen Green, where you'll discover actionable strategies to help your student to reach their academic goals, to excel at standardized testing, and to plan for the college admissions process painlessly. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Green. All right, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Edition this week, Education Live Thursday. Steve Green here, the success doctor. And if you are a parent with a child, I'm going to say in ninth grade or older, you better get your pencils out, you better get your notebooks ready, because I have a fantastic guest again this week who's going to enlighten us on all sorts of things involved in the college admissions process and, and, and just maximizing your talents and your abilities and things like that. I'm excited to have her on. Before we get into that, let me just tell you what's going on here. Every Thursday, we have the uh, Education Live, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. My hair is getting a little long. The COVID cut is needed here. <laughs> anyway, um, last week, this month, September, has been back to school. The theme has been back to school, reintegrating, getting everything in place. Hello, Ron. Good evening. Good to see you on. Uh, and and kind of just helping everybody, I, I'd like to say ease into it. I don't know if everybody is able to ease into it, but... That has been the goal from our end. So we had the Back to School Summit, all of our fantastic speakers. Last week, the guest, Phoenix Badmiss, also a college kind of coach, success coach, very different perspective, I think, than you're going to see from Linda tonight. Both super good uh, and, and, and so on. A couple of things I just want to talk about very quickly. Um, if anybody is looking for support or needing support with Back to School, whether it's virtual whether it is a hybrid, whether it is in school, whether it's a pod, whether it's homeschooling, whatever the uh, catchphrases are these days, there's a ton of places you can get support and a number that I offer myself. So I, I always like to make these available to people. I have the resource community. I have my success community. I'm still doing a lot of direct one-on-one -on -one tutoring if that will help you. And just reach out and let me know. Normally, uh, I try to kind of update people on any sort of current trends in the education world. Uh, aside from the fact that I'm, I'm, I'm monitoring the schools that are going back uh, live versus hybrid, and everybody's sort of talking about it and phasing in. And, you know, parents, uh, some are really uh, uh, aggressive, I'll use that word, about trying to get the schools back to open. I'm seeing petitions to school boards. So my stance is uh, I'm, I'm a little bit conservative, safety first, I think. I think we want to be smart because I've seen schools. I'm tutoring kids in other states. I'm in Pennsylvania, but uh, getting their schools shut down because they're rushing back in and uh, kids are getting a uh, virus and they got to shut the schools down. So, uh, you know, let's just all use some common sense and, and do the best that we can. I, I understand virtual school is a challenge on a number of levels, but we're doing what we can do. So if you do need support, I'd really encourage you to check out the resource community, which you're probably in already if you're seeing this. The success community has got a ton of value in there as well. So if you want to comment, if you are on this live, please comment. All you got to do is drop a comment under the uh, live feed screen. I am kind of multitasking as I'm here. I'm also watching it. Just make sure everything's cool. So how about if we bring in our guests for today? So parents, get ready. I want to introduce you to Linda J. Hallenbeck. What's J stand for? Joy. <laughs> joy. Oh, that's nice. We need joy. In this day and age, we can never have too much happiness, right? So Linda Joy, I like that. All right. So Linda Joy Hallenbeck, uh, let me tell the world a little bit about you. But first of all, welcome. Thank you for coming on. Oh, thank you for uh, having me. In your super Thanks. giant busy schedule, Linda is a uh, master's of education. What is CPRW? Tell me what that Certified means. Certified professional resume writer. Oh, look at that. So, you know, when everybody's got the alphabet soup after their name, they got to mean <laughs> something that's very impressive. So I'm an ME, MSED, and a certified professional resume writer, which is good. Linda spent more than a decade in university administration. Uh, she left the University of Pennsylvania and did a 18,602 miles. I'm sure you 
clock that exactly. Journey around the country. So you, I guess you're kind of finding yourself as where we can talk about that. And then she launched How and Back Consulting to share her insider knowledge of college admissions, university advising, and career development to help teens and young adults navigate their journey from high school to successful careers. So, uh, Linda, how long have you been in business? Um, I started in 2015, so I'm celebrating my five-year anniversary. There you go. You got a master's from BU, Boston University. Very uh, impressive. My yeah. my undergraduate is actually from Boston University. My master's at, is from the University of Pennsylvania. That's what brought me here oh, to the Philly there you area. Go. A little Ivy Leaguer. Look at you. Well, we got, you know, listen, uh, nobody ever said I didn't have a uh, very intelligent, I, I try to get more intelligent people on the show than I am. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just went, I just went to a big 10 school. So uh, <laughs> uh, <there's laughs> whatever. No big 10. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. So um, anyway, uh, let, let's get right down to it. Let's get right down to it. So we're here. The whole goal of my show, the whole goal of my podcast, everything I do is try to give parents and students actions, time to get it to the next level, maximize their education doing what they can, right? So why don't you, let's start with this. It, it's a, uh, let me, I'm going to think of the best word and correct me if you got a better one. Yeah. Unorthodox college admission cycle right now, right? If, you, if you're a senior in high school, you've gone through probably the least um, predictable college admission cycle that's maybe ever existed in, in maybe since uh, whatever, Greece. <laughs> so, um what's your viewpoint on just where it's at right now? If I got a, if I'm a parent, I got a senior, should I be worried? Should I not be worried? Is it all going to just work out in the end? Uh, let's start with that. Absolutely. You should not be worried. It is going to work out in the end. Just all the anxieties and question marks that you have, the colleges have too. They know schools were shut down in March and didn't reopen in the spring. They know that this fall is a little, tumultuous, we'll just say. So they know and they're going to be flexible. They're going to work with you. And I can say, having been at a university administrator for, for many years, they want to hear from you. If you've got a concern, if you've got a question about a particular school you're applying to this process, reach out, build the relationship, ask the mm -hmm. question. They are there to help you um, and they want you to be successful. They want you to join their community. I love that advice. When you say they, you mean the admissions people, the faculty, or just anybody at a university? All the above. All the okay. above. When a student is interested in them, in this, I mean, for them, it's a family. I mean, you, if you think about it, it's not just you're, you're not just choosing a college for four years. I mean, here's my alumni director <laughs> hat coming on again. But if you're choosing this as a, a lifetime relationship, just like you said at the start of my intro, you know, mm -hmm. I am part of the, the Boston University family. I'm also part of the University of Pennsylvania family. You're part of your Big Ten family. Um, and that's that's a lifelong affiliation. And so they, you know, it's their family and they want to bring people in who want to be part of their family and they want to help you. And they're excited. They love, you know, as, as they, as in the professors, they, as in the admissions officers, they're working at that particular school because they love what they do and they love the school mm -hmm. and the community. And so by reaching out and, and showing and expressing that you really want to be part of their community, they're excited and they want to get you excited about joining their family too. So can, let, let's just go right for the, uh, let's just go right for the deep end here. Okay. Go for it. What, what, what would you say in your opinion? Is the, is, is the, I'm going to underline the word the, secret to college admissions. Is there one, is there, is there a magic bullet? Is there a uh, secret sauce, I'm a, 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 a panacea? I'm trying to find every <laughs> vocabulary so, synonym I can I think say, of. But. I mean, there's not a magic bullet in the sense that most, you know, parents and, and teens are looking for in terms of the magic number of APs or the okay. magic yeah. number of extracurriculars. Got it. The true, you know, if there is a secret or magic bullet to college admissions. It's in discovering yourself. It is knowing yourself, knowing your why, your passion, what you want to achieve, and being mm -hmm. able to tell that effectively. I mean, that's that's really the secret is is getting to know yourself, doing doing those activities, taking the classes that allow you to explore the things that you're excited about and you're interested in, because then you're going to tell a much better story in your college application because it's coming from your heart and it's coming. It's your true interests, passions, values that are being shared 
And that's what they want to hear about. Because again, they're, you know, they're looking to figure out who to invite into their family. So they want to know you. So that's truly the magic bullet is, is not doing things because you think it's what the colleges want to hear, but doing the things that are truly core to who you are and allow you to explore those things um, that are interest, you know, interest for you. So, you know, mom and dad, when you say you have to stick with that piano, you know, lesson because you've been doing it since you were five and colleges like to see consistency. <laughs> well, they, yes, they like to see that consistency over time, but they don't want you to force your teen into sticking with piano if they have no interest doing it as once they join the college family. If they're not going to contribute to the music department or the music ensembles on, on campus, then that piano lesson that they had for 12 years isn't of much value to their college mm -hmm. application. Would this, Would this be, be equally true, true? Uh, for, let's, for say, let's say, a, a super, a super competitive, competitive college? college. A Boston uh -oh. University <laughs> or a Penn, as it would be, say, for a less competitive school, let, let's say like a state, like, like a Millersville type of school, Millersville, like a state university. Absolutely. Again, it's they're looking to see who would make the best new family members, who's going to, to join. And so it's about knowing yourself. And it's also about making the match. It's really about being thoughtful. It's about being strategic. It's also being holistic. In mm -hmm. when you're looking to create your school list. So that way you're saying to the school, I see you. I know what your family is all about. I know what you're, you're, what you have to offer. And here's why your family aligns with the family that I want to join. And here's why I would make a great family member. And it's kind of making, as I said, making that match. And so whether it's Millersville, Westchester, you know, Ohio State or University of Pennsylvania, they want to know what you see in them, but also what you're going to bring to their, their community, their family. So it's, I'm going to liken it a little bit to you. You're going to go on a job resume or job resume. You're going to go on a job interview. It makes sense to learn a little about the business, who their competitors yeah. are, right? Who, who, what their big products are, what their history is. So when you go into the interview, you can speak, uh, you know, intelligently about it. It's, it's really the same thing. Absolutely. All that, that said, that's why my whole business is college and career strategy, because mm -hmm. the, the journey of knowing yourself, finding your passions, your values, your interests, your strengths, and then being able to articulate that to t show the match between you and what you're applying to. The journey is very much the same. I also often liken it to, to dating. I mean, you don't want to go on the, on the date, you know, you're, you're talking with a, a few fellows or ladies and you're, you're saying, <laughs> you know, you don't want to say, tell them all, you have beautiful eyes, you have beautiful eyes, you have beautiful eyes, you have beautiful eyes, or I'm going to get a great education for you. I'm going to get a great education for you. I'm going to get a great education. Interesting. You want to get specific to say, you know, here's what I really love about your campus community. Here's what your, why your computer science program stands out from other computer science programs. Here's the professors that I'm really excited to work with. Now, right when, there. but I got so many questions for you. <laughs> one, okay, because I want to write them down. I take notes. I'm a note taker. Number one, when would you communicate this? On a visit, on a campus visit, in an essay, through a direct communication, maybe an email? So I love the idea, right? It, you're basically it, saying, I want, I want in. I, lo I love what you're making. I, I want to be there. I get it. When would you communicate this as, as a candidate? But, you know, all the above. I mean, so... You know, I, I kind of see it, there's a journey in throughout your, your four years of high school. Your, your high school years are your launch pad to, to your, as I said, your high school to successful career um, with mm -hmm. college often being a stop in between. And so it's, it's about building. So you need to take time to get to know you. But as you um, get to know you, another thing, like so I often say, you know, maybe sophomore year, you're not necessarily going on the official tours and necessarily, you know, calling up all the professors, but you should be starting to kind of get a sense, you know, utilize your local area, even just on a Saturday, go walk around different campuses, even if they're ones you might not necessarily want to apply to, to get a sense of, do you like big or small? Do you like urban or do you like suburban or rural campuses? You know, do you want to be in a, a school that sports is a big, you know, that that school spirit's important to you? Um, getting a sense of the, the architecture that kind of speaks to you, the, that environment. Mm -hmm. 
So starting there to kind of get that sense so that way you are able to articulate that. Um, and then as you get into to junior year, that's when you really should start making those more formal visits. You would, you know, not only just do the the tour and info session, but have those one on one meetings so you can mm -hmm. get to know them better and then follow up with a nice, you know, thank you note. And here's what I learned from thank you for the conversation. And here's what I learned um, about why, you know, this is looking like a school that's going to be a strong fit for me. So you can be doing it through the exploration process and then absolutely on your application itself. Right. Those essays, those essays are really the heart of when that that kind of match. So, um, so everything you're saying, mm -hmm. I think, is fantastic. But you can't discount. You still need the you still need the grades. Absolutely. I mean, you, you could say I love the I love the quad here. It's just it's whatever the most gorgeous quad I ever saw. Or, you know, your sports teams, I'm just so into the school spirit here, raw. But, you know, if you don't have the GPA, or at least in the range, and you don't have the maybe SAT or ACT kind of scores, however important they are, so you got to take care of business on the, I'm going to call it relationship building side, right? And then you also got to take care of it in your numbers side. Absolutely. A little bit more where I come in, but what you're saying makes so much sense. And, and it's not hard to do, right? It's just a matter of investing the time and energy to do it. Now, let, let's, let's talk about a timeline, okay? Mm -hmm. Because I know a lot of parents say to me, Steve, why should I come to a talk on college admissions? My kid's in eighth or ninth grade, right? And you might, you might hear this as well, maybe once ever in your five years of <laughs> coaching. So what's a, what's a practical, useful timeline when when th when things should get done, and I imagine you could probably talk for a few hours about this, but oh yeah, I'm gonna and give I, you I'm gonna give you about uh, I'm gonna give you about two also, minutes here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give a little overview. I also have a, a a one page little snapshot of kind of what I'll be I'll walk you through, so um, people can email me, and I'm I'm happy to. If you want to, that. we can. Uh, I don't want to I don't want to distract sure. your flow. We can drop that into the community where this is airing. If you want okay. as well, I can post it in there. So either way, we'll get with Linda. Her email and contact information is scrolling below us. But anyway, okay. So, so anyway, so so what I, Talk to basically us. the way I think about it is I think about ninth grade as the year of exploration. So this is the year where you're establishing, your child should be establishing the foundation, or you if the teen, if you guys, high schoolers are watching, ninth graders. This is your year to set yourself up. This is your foundation. It's also the year we know you're kind of getting your feet on the ground, and this is an particularly difficult year with that because you're not in a school in the way you normally are. But do your best to set yourself as a foundation. You know, we know that high school is definitely a little more difficult than middle school. So you're to do your best, make sure you're building relationships with your teachers and your, your school counselors to set yourself up for success. And so they get to know you. Um, you're going to use this to kind of gauge where you want to go when you're doing your academics in the years to come. So this is your foundation. You know, it's okay. You get that, that B or that C. How are you going to build on it? How are you going to improve by the end of this year? And then build on it as you go into sophomore, junior, and senior year. Um, in your extracurriculars, you want to explore. You want to push yourself with things that you kind of know already that you like, but try at least one or two things that you, you might not know that you um, you've never explored before, whether it be something that your friends encourage you or just something that kind of piques your interest. So explore. Again, hmm. your year of exploration. You don't have to worry too much about the SAT, ACT in ninth grade. Just get your foundation, your feet on the ground in terms of your activities and your academics and use this year to explore. Okay. Sophomore year. That's your year ninth of discovery. Grade check. Okay. Mm -hmm. So sophomore year, year of discovery. So taking what you've learned and, and building on your foundation. Again, continue to academically challenge yourself, push yourself um, to try that. You know, maybe it is try that honors class or that AP class. Um, so challenge yourself and, and do your best to rise to that challenge that you've set for yourself. Always, always, always know when to ask for help. You're the CEO of your own company. So you want to make sure that you surround yourself with the support you need to, to make your company successful. Mm -hmm. um, dive deeper into your, your extracurriculars. Sometimes it's hard for sophomores to have formal leadership roles. A lot of times juniors and seniors take those, you know, the titles, but look for informal ways to show leadership and show interest in a particular area. Um, this is also, as I mentioned earlier, a great year to start doing some, some general looking at the schools and, and to get the exploration of the types of schools that you're interested in. And this is also a great year for diagnostic on your SAT and ACT. 
Um, so that way you're setting yourself up for success um, in your testing strategy. Then we Junior got the big year. year. This is the big year, right? This is the big year. So okay. 11th grade, this is the year of refinement. This is really where, after having two years of exploration and discovery, we want you to start to refine. We want you to dig deeper. So it's not about the quantity, the numbers of your extracurriculars. It's about the quality. It's about doing things that are really meaningful, allow you to, to dig, you know, dig deep, show your leadership, show your interest. Um, really do that career exploration, start to to do things that are related to that major or career that you're thinking about. So that way you're you're not just saying, I like biology, I like helping people, so that's why I'm applying pre-med. You want to do do the homework, find out about different career paths within the medical sphere. So that way when you're saying pre-med, you're kind of you can distinguish what it means to be pre-med versus being nursing versus being um, you know, kine you know, kinesiology. Um, mm -hmm. The standardized testing. This is your year. I would I recommend um, you you are uh, you do some testing uh, tutoring. So I'm sure you can also. But I like to say have all of the testing done by the end of junior year. You don't. That's want to be typically doing, my counsel as well. You, you know, when possible. Yeah, I mean you don't really want to be doing testing into your senior year because you're you're going to be busy with other things senior year. Get it all mm -hmm. done in junior year. Um, and also junior year is a great year to request, you know, again, you should be building your relationships with your teachers and your counselors all through, but be proactive and ask for the letters of recommendation. Um, even if you're, you know, your school doesn't formally do it until fall of, of senior year, get a head start. Let your teacher know that, you know, you really value their class, value their opinion, and would love for them to support you in your, your college applications. So that's um, 11. And then 12th is the, the year of the launch. Um, I actually recommend, even though I'm saying 12th, the summer before 12th grade, that's when you want to get that head start um, on your, your college applications. Hopefully, you've been doing the exploration of the colleges, as I mentioned earlier, throughout junior year. So that way, by the end of junior year, kind of or early summer of um, junior into senior year, you know what your school list is, and you can start working on those essays and get that head start. Um, you don't, you want to avoid the senior slide. You want it, academics will still be important <laughs> as you go into senior year. I know it, you know, feels like, oh, well, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm applications are out. They still will look at your grades. They get a first uh, re a report of first quarter. They also get an end of the year report. So mm -hmm. avoid the senior slide. You know, this is your education. You're setting your foundation for college. Um, so those courses, especially senior year courses are some of the, your toughest courses and usually ones that you will either have or build on in your freshman year of college. So mastering the, you know, really focusing on mastering the subject matter um, is important. Again, continue to add skills and leadership because those are the things that are gonna help propel you both in your college application, but also for landing the really great research um, and, and jobs and things in college. So continue to build that leadership. Uh, most college applications are typically due between October 15th and January 1st. I recommend, again, if you can front load and get a lot of your essays done over the summer, you know, focus on getting a lot of things in during that early application time so that way you can cross it off and start to enjoy senior year focusing on your, your clubs and your classes and, and enjoying that senior year. And make sure you pursue outside scholarships. There are a lot of, there are a lot of money out there to be had, so um, make that, sh that part of your senior year strategy to apply to see what, what's available locally as well as nationally that you can compete for. Every little bit, every little bit helps. Well, let's just take a breath for a second. First of all, the, tremendous information there, Linda. So I'm going to try to recap. I'm going to give you a little chance to, to rest. <laughs> Ninth grade exploration, 10th mm -hmm. grade discovery, 11th grade refinement, 12th grade the launch, right? Um, Steve Green here. This is Education Thursday Live. My guest, Linda Hallenbach, college and career coach, I mean, just bringing a huge amount of information and value today. I hope everybody is uh, enjoying this. And, and more importantly, it's getting the wheels spinning, right? That's the whole idea. Speaking of wheels spinning, um, by the, oh, by the way, we are here every Thursday night at 8. So put it on your calendar. Get it going. Okay. Speaking of getting the wheels spinning, I'm a parent. I'm sitting there going, Linda, this sounds great. Steve, this sounds great. Love it, love it, love it. But my kid will never do it. <laughs> my kid's lazy. My kid doesn't care. My kid thinks they know it all. I had raised two teenagers. Uh, I heard that a few times. 
Um, so how do we, how do you counsel? Cause this is a team effort, right? Can I make that assumption? It's Absolutely. not just you, it's not just the student. It's, it's the whole team, the parents, in some cases, maybe other allied professionals, uh, teachers, sometimes whatever. How do you get the parents to feel like they can get their kids motivated to do this or keep them engaged? Is there a, any, any advice you want to give there? It's not supposed to be a therapy <laughs> session, but, but, but I've got to imagine it, it's, it's, it can be a friction thing because you got the parents who want one set of goals, right? Mm-hmm. Kids might not have the same goals. They may not be aligned, at least not all the time. So w- 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 what's your stance on that? What, what do you think about that? So, of course, every teen is different. Um, every situation is different. But mm-hmm. what I like to say, you know, at the heart of it is, although parents, you want your children to be successful, happy, independent, you want to push them, you want them to be ahead so they're not stressed, and so you're not stressed, um, this really is their future and it has to be their process. You have to allow them allow them, and, and encourage them and support them to be the CEO of their company. You have to put them in the driver's seat. Your job, and, and typically how I see myself when I join a, a family's team, is that we're the guardrails, we're the guide rails. We're making sure that they're moving forward, they're making progress and that they don't fall off the cliff. But you also have to give just like a guard, you know, there is that shoulder. You've got to give them a little <laughs> bit of room to swerve a little as they're learning. Um, do you ever you know, teach? Do you ever do you have kids? I mean, I'm completely no, off track. I'm a big, a big sister and an aunt. OK, I'm, so listen, let me tell you something. I taught both my kids to drive. And if there's any parent out there sitting there going, oh, my gosh, Steve, I know you're going with this. You're sitting in the front seat with your kid. Right. And I'm telling you, you're sitting there. You're sitting there like grabbing it because they they. <laughs> They drive. When you're talking about that, they go in the middle of the road, they almost hitting the curb, and you're like banging on the floor with your foot like you're hitting the brake. If you want to get high blood pressure, that's the easiest way, I'm telling you. But anyway, um, yeah, yeah, sorry. I, I, I no, digress. I, but, 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 I, but being in the car with my father. Yeah, and, and listen, <laughs> let, let's be real here for a second. It, this is not going to be a completely harmonious, beautiful love that. fest for four years, right? There's probably going to be at points where people are not going to agree and there might be some friction. But I think, and I, I'm going to say you may agree with me on this, it's about having the end goal, right? The win, quote unquote, is is the first year you step foot on the campus as a student at university of your dreams, right? That's how we win or the, the, the student wins. So, um, so parents, they got to be the guide. I agree. They got to guide it, but I think they also got to learn to maybe let it, you know, kind of find itself a little bit. Yeah, And, um, and what I say is it's about... Instead of, you know, and I know it is hard. I understand it is hard. But rather than, you know, telling them, you know, asking the right questions to encourage them to take ownership. Um, so let's, let's, ask, role play. let's role play here for a second. Oh. I don't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> okay, so I'm supposed to do what? Give me something I want to do. I'm supposed to do. Some, Steve, some, have you started your essay? <laughs> yeah, have you started your essay? Uh, I made some notes. <laughs> So, I mean, (laughs) for me, some of the questions that, you know, you know, if they're, if they're not, if you know that they're supposed to be making progress, so you've got the seniors right now, they, hopefully they have either are mostly done or have a good head start from the summer. But if they're, if they aren't, or if they are stalling out, you know, the question that I like to ask is, you know, what is causing you just to procrastinate on that or what what fear do you have about the essay what are you worried about so hopefully maybe you can tease out what it is you know that whether it be an insecurity uh you know I, I just don't think i can tell my story well or i just don't know what to write about or or you know i'm worried that i'm just not going to get anywhere so that way you can be there to be a support for them so you know rather than just you know is it done yet is it done yet why are you, you know, what, what's the reason, what are you worried about that's causing you to stall with, with your So essay? we're going like disease, not symptom, so mm-hmm. to speak. Interesting. Kind of really getting at that. I mean, we back it up in terms of, you know, your, your uh, teen is, you're saying, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, mm. we need to get you involved <laughs> in something. We'll you know, par- instead, <laughs> instead of asking them what they want to be, because right. truth, truthfully, I mean, Career paths that that exist now, you know, if I would have told you they were going to exist, you know, 
10 years ago, 15 years ago, you would have thought I was crazy. If I, if I told you we were going to be making phone calls on a watch, you would have thought I was nuts. Um, so, you know, <laughs> technology and career paths and, and industries are changing so rapidly. It's yeah, not, you know, they need to have some idea of what are, where their passions are, but they also have to be, um, we're preparing them and college is preparing them to be able to think outside the box, to be flexible, to be the ones that change and create the mm -hmm. industries, the jobs, the, the, the technology of the future. And so what I like to ask is, what impact do you want to have on the world? If we were to stop and and look um, down the road, you know, and look back on your life, what's the the change? Whether it be it doesn't have to be the big wide world. When I say world, it doesn't have to be big wide. It can be you know within a community, a particular population, a particular. What impact did you want to have? What do you want to look back? How would you feel that you you had a life well lived? Hmm. And get them thinking. And it's a tough question. They're not going to know the answer on necessarily on that first try, but it's in creating those the space right. for those conversations yeah. and, and those yes. those reflections that will lead to them taking ownership. You know, what can I do to support you in exploring X, whatever whatever that X is that they come up with? Is is it can, is it can I just summarize? Say, listen, you treat them like an adult, you know, and you get, you're giving them a big responsibility. And you're giving them the guidance. Now it's up to them. You got the plans and the tools. You got now. You got to build your own house, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, we got time for two more questions. Sure. But I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit <laughs> because I do get parents talking to me about this. So I want to. I'm going to. I'm kind of the voice of the collective here in a little bit. I get people saying to me, "College, the value a college education isn't what it used to be." I'm not talking about any particular school. Like, you know, what do we need college for anymore? Kids need to go out. They learn on the job. Um, you know, why do, as a parent, why do I want to pay a quarter million dollars, fill in the blank number wise? Because no matter where you go, college isn't it cheap, right? That's, we don't have to go there because mm -hmm. that's just a, basically an accepted fact. Um, and they're saying, yeah, is it really worth it? You know, maybe my, my kid goes to trade school. Maybe my kid goes in the army. I don't know. Um, you know, and, and you're an academic, obviously. You've been in it as a career and, you know, you got a good, great pedigree that way as well. You know, what's your opinion about that? Where do, where's a college education kind of fit, um, you know, philosophically, maybe a little bit, practically a little bit in, in 2020 and moving forward? So I don't necessarily think college is or needs to be for everyone. You know, there is absolutely nothing wrong with trade school or, you know, we need people to serve, and, and I'm grateful for the people that have chosen to serve in our military. Mm -hmm. um, those are great career paths as well. So, you know, again, this goes back to helping your your child to find their why, helping them to figure out what it is that inspires them. What, what are they most curious about? How do they want to have impact? Mm -hmm. In terms of college, I mean, you know, I come from, I'm originally from Scranton, Pennsylvania. You know, I come from... Uh, a family, you know, my, my father did graduate from college, but not, uh, not traditionally. He didn't go straight from high school. He was in the military for, uh, for a few years before. Um, and my mom did a, a two year, like uh, nursing tech, you know, they inspired and instilled in me that, that education is a, a means for improving yourself in, in improving the way that you think about the world, that you see the world, um, and, and providing opportunities, opening doors. So, I mean, you know, that still, that is part of what led me to a career in education, because for me, you know, it was the scholarship that I got to Boston University that brought me out of Scranton and opened my eyes, gave me an opportunity to travel abroad, um, gave me the opportunity to, to have internships, to meet people from around the world, to look at things in different perspectives. So, you know, I'm probably, as you mentioned, uh, you know, I'm a little biased. I mean, for me, education was the means that, I mean, I, you know, if I would have told my parents I'd start my own business, you know, that wasn't the path that most members of my family. I mean, I've got a lot of uh, blue collar mm -hmm. and trades people in my family. Um, so for me, this was education is, is personal. It is, it is a way to, to open doors. Um, so, so I still believe in college. And, you know, I still think it's a great place to expand your network, to, to as I said, build those critical thinking skills, to create um, a mindset that opens uh, to flexibility to the different opportunities that are out there in the world and to be ready for what comes next and to be the trailblazer of what comes next. 
Um, but it, you know, again, it's not for everyone and, and that's okay. I mean, we all have to kind of know our, our why and our, our past, passion and, and make that path that makes sense for, for us. Um, you know, there I, are a lot I, of great people I mean, that my, my make their really great careers. Well, my, my opinion about it is, and, and I'm, I'm just going to keep it really short, short is, 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 I think, I think you, get, you, you got to stick your toe in the water at some point in time, right? You, you can't, it's difficult because people change careers. There's nothing wrong with that. People make, you know, go different directions. But I think, I think it's an ability. It's, it's a kind of a proving ground. You got a four year window mm -hmm. where you have licensed to grow emotionally, uh, mentally, uh, whatever, uh, what, you know, academically, intellectually with, a, with lower risk, right? Yeah. Maybe even no risk to a point. Cause once you're in the job market and you got the mortgage and the car and the, whatever, the dog and the picket fence, you don't have that flexibility anymore. So yeah, I, I think there's a piece of that as well. There's, there, you can make an argument yeah, on either it, side. It's, it's further exploration. It gives you time to experiment and to try. I mean, where else can you try both a science career path, a humanities career path, an internship in business? I mean, all in one. I mean, once you have a job and as you said, a mortgage, everything else, it's really hard to experiment and try new things. It, it, um, it is. It's interesting. I mean, I went to a, like a, a pre-med factory kind of college. I, I don't know the number. I'm going to say 50% of the people there were pre-med. And I was an education major. I was like in this kind of outlier major. I mean, why would you go to this school to be an education major? That's what I wanted to do. But, you know, I, I, um, it was a very different experience. I think I had there doing what I studied versus the people who were pre-med. All they did was study. I mean, really, all they did was study. They were so stressed out about getting in med school and, you know, all that. And justifiably, it was a very, very competitive uh, lifestyle. But I don't know that they enjoyed college. I think it was more like almost like a job before they even had a job to get a job. If that makes any sense. Um, let's do this. I am very curious about the 16,602 miles. How many miles was it? 18,602 miles. 18,600. <laughs> that's what, like all the way around the earth almost. I don't even know. What's, <laughs> what's the circumference of the earth? I don't know. But um, I want to hear about that a little bit. But here's what I want to do first. This is Education Live Thursday. Steve Free, my guest. Linda Hollenbach, who is, I can't thank you enough. This has been really excellent. And I hope the people listening are, are getting the value that, that uh, you're giving here. Um, we're here every Thursday night. My guest next week, Hallie Steinberg, a nutritionist. You can learn how to take care of your body, take care of your uh, mental acuity a little bit. And she's been on before. She did a great job. Really funny. Very, very knowledgeable as well. Um, do this. Can you summarize your, what you really want a parent to take away from the last half hour, plus or minus, in maybe two or three sentences. Is that even possible in, in your world? <laughs> you say guy. no, I'll give you four sentences. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <This is tough. laughs> I would say, you know, be the guide rail and help them to find their why. I mean, kind of building off of, of Phoenix's talk last, last mm -hmm. week, that is so important to their journey. And, and that is what is going to help them to be, regardless of whatever it is, that's what's going to help them to be successful and happy in the future is if they find what drives them, what their passion is, and then help them, support them in pursuing it. Well, I, 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 li I like that because I work with kids all day and my mission is to help them reach their goals. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, this, their goals, that's the whole point. Reach their goals, not my goal for them. Um, awesome. Quickly, how do people get a hold of you? I'm going to flash on the bottom again. Um, email, you like that? You want to go to your website? Yeah. Linda at HollandbackConsulting.com. HollandbackConsulting.com is my website. I'm also on Instagram, Hollandback Consulting, and Facebook, Hollandback Consulting LLC. Okay, very, very consistent. I love the branding. <laughs> so quick, let's talk about this trip. 18,602 miles. Let me get my calculator for a second because I am curious. That is, if you care, 29,763 kilometers. <laughs> That's a Plus or minus. So, so is this uh, all in the United States? Was this international? It was all in the U.S. Um, I had had a, a life goal dream of traveling around the country. I can say it got cut short because we oh. had Thanksgiving with family and we decided we wanted to, our nieces wanted to see us home for Christmas. So um, we, we have another adventure ahead. I don't know when we're going to plan that, but <laughs> there's okay. another, another part of the loop that we didn't finish. Um, but yeah, we went across the northern part. Uh, of the U.S. came down along the the, co the west coast mm -hmm. and, and then along the south. Um, we were staying off major highways, so we were doing scenic byways. 
you know, Great River Road, national parks, art museums, and our only destination every day, or the, the only thing that was driving us was where is the best place to see sunset. And oh. it was an amazing, amazing adventure. Uh, it, was there a singular highlight? I got to ask. It's so hard. Um, or, or, I think, what's the, I think, what do you, I mean, what do you remember now? I mean, obviously you probably, one, have a, you know, one of the things that stood out encyclopedia of memories white, from this, white but. Sands national monument in, in New Mexico, you drive through, you know, desert. It's like no man's land. It's where they tested the nuclear, <laughs> nuclear bombs. Um, but then you hit all of a sudden the desert shifts and you have white and it looks, uh, you know, if you look at pictures, it almost looks like snow, but it is literally mm -hmm. a white gypsum sand and you can run up these huge sand dunes and we were there for a sunset and so you have the white off the spectacular pink and orange and purple um oh. you know backdrop of the the sunset and that was pretty amazing and i was most surprised i think by like the great river road the mississippi river and all of the wonderful little towns along it um, Wisconsin. And was this in like a uh, Volkswagen minibus kind of thing? Or? Honda Civic that I Honda Civic. still have. <laughs> you picked the smallest car another. ever built to drive 18,600 or 29,000 kilometers in. <laughs> um, well, listen, you have, uh, listen, I, 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 professionally, I really like what you're doing. It, it's just a, a huge amount of information and value. And I would encourage people to, just to reach out. Uh, I mean, imagine you have some sort of consulting. Uh, yeah, I do a know. free free 30 minute, no obligation mm -hmm. uh, strategy session where I'll review uh, your team or your if you have a team watching your kind of classes and transcript, your tests and your activities that you're doing and talk about where you are and what your goals are and give you some tips. So even if you decide not to work with me, um, you still walk away with a little bit of a roadmap of where you have opportunities to strengthen, strengthen your candidacy. There you go. Well, okay. I, I mean, we, I'm going to have to talk to you offline because this trip is really fascinating. I get, let me ask you <laughs> one more question about it. Uh, okay. Let's see. Uh, best sunset. Uh, as I said, the White Sands one was. Right, so that one stands out. Any sunrises, or you you couldn't stay, you couldn't get up that early. <laughs> I'm a night owl. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this was a sunset only, no, not one sunrise. Um, we went. I did. I hiked in the Grand Canyon, and what they do is you basically you walk down to the bottom and you sleep overnight in the bottom. Uh, there's probably a geological name for it, whatever. And then they wake you up like three thirty in the morning because if it takes you too long to walk up, it just gets too hot. So you want to kind of get out of there before it's like 98 degrees. But anyway, we, we started in the dark and like the guy's carrying like, it's like one of them, it's like one of those lanterns. It's like on a handle kind of thing. And the sun starts to come up and all the, it's the coolest thing. Cause you're, I don't know how deep the Grand Canyon is, thousand feet and it's pretty deep mm -hmm. and you're looking up and all you can see is like this black, it's almost like a black, it's like almost like you're in a dark room. And then all of a sudden the sun comes over it and it's like, it's like a light switch went on. But the colors aren't like a light bulb. They're like yellow and orange. And it was really like, and, and, and like I took 100 pictures, but they, none of them justified it because it was so massive. I mean, it was just oh, so giant, it, enormous. It was really, really. Our national parks are such a Yeah, treasure. they really are. It's a shame I, they're all I, not I near so, here. I'm <laughs> so grateful that, you know, our those who came before us thought to, to save and preserve those. They were found I, by I, Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt started the national park system, by the way. Uh, uh, whatever the president he national was. National park is another great one for a sunset. We, we did sunset at the delicate arch and that was, that was pretty spectacular as well. Wow. All right. Well, we, we could certainly get off topic here, <laughs> but hopefully we have at least gotten the point across. I will be back next Thursday night with Hallie Steinberg, uh, nutritionist, dietitian, health coach extraordinaire. Linda, one last time, thank you so much for taking the time to come out. Oh, I appreciate so it. Love to get you back in a few months, maybe for some updates. Um, last thing for you, I'm going to give you the last word. It is late September. Uh, seniors, what do they need to be doing right now if they haven't already? They should be absolutely working on their applications. If they haven't you know, reached out to the schools that they're planning to apply to, so they start letting them know that their their application is on the on the way and okay. kind of having the conversation with the schools. Um, I think one of the things I'll, I'll mention, the COVID, there's a new COVID question on the common application. And I know there's a lot of question about, should I fill that out? 
what I'm recommending is, you know, they know that COVID happened. They know you didn't have school. They know some of your activities um, may have been canceled. Use that if you've had something significant, if your family has had a significant hardship as a result of COVID, or if a significant activity that was really going to help um, kind of tie into your major to help you to dive in, or that's part of, you know, why you're, why you're a little maybe un, as un, unsure mm-hmm. about your major, use it um, strategically for that. If you're just in a, if, if you really weren't overly affected other than not having school, um, there's not really a need to, to just say, so oh. It's oh, almost God. just another angle on the, what was the challenge in your life that you dealt with and overcome, except it's specifically. The, it's a very specific. It's a short right. extra essay meant for families who had significant impact, you know, beyond mm-hmm. the normal, just school being right. closed and, and, you know, stores being closed and activities Interesting. being canceled. All right. Let's hear it. Hey, hey folks, what do you think of Linda's speech today? Oh, yeah, uh, there's a live audience here, not where you are. You're, you're remote. I love somewhere. it. <laughs> yeah, live audience. They're cheering. They're screaming. They got signs. They're, they're doing the wave. It's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> All right. We are going to wrap this up. I appreciate everybody who's listening in the comments. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm inviting Linda to come into the resource community and kind of engage with everyone, uh, I guess, asynchronously. There's a big word that's being thrown around a lot lately. And we will make that happen. So here we go. Let's post this up there. There's, there's some love from Ronald Shapiro. Oh, thanks, Ron, Ron, thank you. Ron Education and Entertainment, that is his company. He actually helped sponsor uh, my big event in September and I guess today too. So we'll give you a little shout out, Ron. Thank you. All right. I will see everybody next week. Have a great uh, everything and we will go from there. Thanks again. Thank so long. you. Have a great night, everybody. You've been listening to Make the Grade with the success doctor, Stephen Green. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe. For more resources and support, please visit makethegrade.net.